Hello viewers, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I will be taking you through my prediction on English Paper 3 for the Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education KCSE 2022 that is due in less than three weeks. I want to talk about uh, Paper 3. And in uh, Paper 3, what is tested is writing skills. Number one, uh, the first question tests on imaginative writing. Then uh, the second question is an essay on literary set text, that is a compulsory set text. Then finally, question three is an optional set text. I want to take us through what a candidate needs to consider in handling the second question that is on the compulsory set text. Before I give my prediction, allow me to give a stratagem that a candidate can now use during this duration before the examinations. I still believe that the three weeks is still a long time to change quite a lot of things in one's performance. This text, that is a doll's house, has only 120 pages. So in an event that a candidate decides to even read 40 pages a day, that would mean that in three days, the candidate will be done with the old text. This is my strategy that I give to candidates in handling this text in the remaining days. I urge candidates to draw at a given table, maybe at the back of your books or anywhere. And in that your table, you should have various columns. These columns, you're going to have the various thematic concerns or issues that have been raised in this text. Because as we know, most of the questions normally frame the various themes that are evident in the text. So I have done such an example here on the board that I would want us to look at. And the first theme that I've considered is male chauvinism. And for the purpose of this video, I have used this illustration only on Act 1. So, for instance, if a candidate is reading through this text and you have already drawn up your various columns at the back of your book or somewhere else, you will have the first column as having male chauvinism. Then, as you go on with your reading, any instance of male chauvinism that you come across in that given act or that given episode one is reading, then you note it down. Like for instance, on page three, there is an instance of male chauvinism where Torvald tells Nora that her opinion on borrowing money and taking debts is that of a woman. Then on page 27, uh, the same text, it is evident that Torvald has forbidden macaroons and that brings about the domineering or the authoritarian kind of influence he has on Nora. Again, this is seen on page 47 where uh, uh, Torvald tells Nora that those who have gone under during their early days have been as a result of the bad influence of a mother. Then again, there is also the deceit. There is a deceit there, and some of the illustrations are from page 24, page 42, page 43, uh, featuring Nora. At one point, Nora tells the husband Toval that she has not been taking macaroons and she has not seen a confectioner and that is the direct opposite of what 
she has just done. Then on page 43, she lies and also makes her children to lie by telling them that when Tobal comes, they should not tell him that she has just had a talk with Crockstad. Then there is the theme of sacrifice and uh, the theme of sacrifice is seen on Nora that is on page 12 and 21. We realize that uh, Nora's husband that is Torvald Helmer really walked out of his job because there was no prospect of promotion and in doing that he overworked himself, became dreadfully ill and the doctors advised that he had to be taken to the south for treatment. Nora did not have any money and for that reason she went and procured a loan behind her husband's back from Kronstadt. That is 250 pound uh, loan. In order to repay this, Nora has had to sacrifice a lot. Number one, she has had to tend to indulge herself in odd jobs, crochet work, embroidery, knitting. She has also had to be doing a lot of coping deep into the night. And she even committed a fraud, risking being charged in a court of law. So that brings about her sacrifice. Then another character there who sacrifices is Mrs. Lind. Mrs. Lind sacrifices her genuine love for Krogstad in order to get married to a rich man because the mother is bedridden and hospitalized and also his two, uh, her two brothers cannot also fend for themselves. Then there is uh, moral decadence or moral decay or immorality. Uh, the first character is Krogstad and uh, Dr. Rank, when Krogstad comes to persuade Torvald to retain him at the bank, Dr. Rank tells Mrs. Lind and Nora that Krogstad, who is in there with the Torvald, is morally deceased and sniffing for any opportunity to carry out his corruption. Again, Krogstad himself on page 35 confesses that at one point he was guilty of indiscretion. Again, Torvald says in page 46 that he cannot trust uh, working with Krogstad because Krogstad forged someone's name. Again, Nora also comes out as corrupt because she has also committed a fraud and forgery. In uh, acquiring the 250 pound loan to take her husband Torvald to the south for treatment as advised by doctors, we, it occurs that Nora committed a uh, fraud. On the bond that she was to sign, it occurs that her father's signature is dated on 2nd of October, yet the father himself died on 29th of September. That is a discrepancy and it would mean that uh, Nora's papa died on 29th, then three days later rose from the dead to sign this bond. And again, we also see Torval also coming out as corrupt. In page 104, when Torvald finally realizes that Nora has committed a fraud and Nora really uh, borrowed money behind his back, he says that, is this the way that Nora could repay him? After having winked at the case of Nora's uh, papa. So it appears that having winked or ignored in this thorough investigating into the matter of Nora's papa's allegations, it shows that Toval was an accomplice in that uh, act and that amounts to corruption. Again, Nora's papa on page 58 and uh, 59, when Nora tries to at one last time persuade Torvald not to sack 
uh, Crogsted from his position at the bank, she reinforces her point by flashbacking to the moment that Nora, that, that her papa was uh, slandered and sort of defamed by this same uh, pressman. And it occurs that Torvald mentions that Nora needs not to fear because Nora's papa's reputation was below suspicion, but his reputation, that is Torvald's, is above suspicion. Again, there is the position of the woman in the society, and this shows on the Nora's choice of gifts. For Iva, Nora has bought a sword and a suit. For Bob, she has bought a trumpet and a horse. And for Amy, she has just bought a doll and a doll's bedsteads. And she even says that they look so plain, but she is sure that with the time, uh, Amy is going to break them into various pieces. So this one shows the kind of unreliability with which women are viewed in the society. Again, Nora's interaction with the children on page 30 also brings something about the position of the woman in the society. We see uh, the boys, that is Ivor and Bob, the future men, asserting their masculinity when Ivor says that he pulled Bob and Amy along as a sleigh to show that he is able to do manly things. The same is with Bob. Bob who tells Nora proudly that he has been snowballing. But when it comes to Amy, then she is Nora's little uh, doll. Again on page 44 and 45, when Toval seems to have put to a close the matters about Krogstad, it is evident and it occurs that Nora's intends to please uh, Torvald by selling herself short, saying that she cannot hit upon anything. All that she thinks of is silly and insignificant. And then it seems that she is also raising uh, Torvald to a given pedestal and uh, sort of saying that whatever Torvald thinks of, that Torvald has a good a taste. Then lastly, there is that theme of hypocrisy, and hypocrisy is seen in Torvald. Torvald has always been promising Nora that when the worst comes to the worst, he will be there and he will stand in for her. On page 61, Torvald makes this statement that come what will, you may be sure that I shall have both the courage and strength if they be needed, and I will be man enough to take everything upon myself. Again on page 101, stroke 102, uh, Toval also tells Nora that, Do you know, Nora, I have often wished for a moment that you were threatened by some great danger, so that I would risk my life's blood and everything for your sake. But then on page 103 and 104, when it occurs, that Nora has been threatened by this great secret of uh, borrowing money behind her husband's back, it comes out that now Torvald fails to live up to his promises and starts calling Nora with abusive names. Nora is now a miserable creature with silly excuses. Nora is now a hypocrite. Nora is now a liar, and worse, worse, Nora is a criminal. Again, Dr. Rank on page 68 and 70 confesses his love for uh, Nora. He confesses his love for Nora uh, when Nora tells him that Toval is inexpressibly and devotedly in love with her. Uh, Dr. Rank says or asks Nora if Toval is the only one. He also goes on to say that Nora can be in his company as he is in Toval's. And this amounts to hypocrisy because 
Dr. Rank is an intimate friend of the Helmers, but going ahead to confess his love for Nora, who is Tovel's wife, is the greatest height of hypocrisy. So, viewers, candidates, this is something worth trying because always the devil is on the details. The most candidates miss on the marks on essays because they are unable to piece together the various details. It is not enough to say that Nora sacrifices, but it is enough to bring about the details on the kind of sacrifices that Nora makes. During the next video, I will be taking you through how to answer my prediction question. And uh, over the many papers that I've looked at, they are majorly talking about a sacrifice. They are majorly talking about a sacrifice, looking at Nora and looking at other women. So that is the question that I will try to answer in my next video.